Assalamu alaikum peace and blessings be upon all of you Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful What happened on September 11th 2001 was nothing short cowardice murder cold blooded premeditated murder we denounce this callous slaughter in the strongest terms please be assured that such brutality is an in absolute conflict with the noble principles of islam please be assured it is in diametric conflict with our noble principles i will say more about this later As American Muslims we share in the grief of those who were impacted by this tragedy. We remember those who fell that day. We remember the rescuers and the first responders who fell that day. We remember the Jews, we remember the Christians, we remember the Muslims and those all belief systems who fell that day we remember tariq amanullah one of the founding members of why islam who fell that day oh allah we appeal to you show mercy to those who have returned to you yours is the mercy that belongs to all O oh Allah is the pain of those who remain behind bathe their scars in your soothing mercy O oh Allah help us remember that we belong together because we are all the progeny of Adam peace and blessings be upon him and Eve but we can complacent the storm of 911 has not passed the 911 terror was not confined to the american mainland it precipitated the ensuing wars of iraq which have claimed and continue to claim countless lives continue to shatter countless dreams now the terror of 911 placed islam in a position of double jeopardy on the one hand the actions of the perpetrators was a gross misrepresentation of the values of islam on the other hand it generated oceans of distrust hate revenge anti-islam sentiment and distortions of the truth allow me to address a couple of these distortions by referring to a case history an actual case history here are the distortions Islam is here to con by force. The next distortion. Islam does not permit cordiality towards non-believers. Allow me to address these two distortions with one case history. Two birds with one stone. The Prophet peace and blessings be upon him was resting under a tree. An assassin crept up on him sword in hand and challenged the prophet saying aha who will save you from me reflexively the prophet cried out allah the man fumbled the sword in surprise it fell to the ground and the prophet of allah re nimbly ret retrieved it 
and turned upon his aggressor, aha, who will save you from me? Be kind to your prisoner, the man stuttered. So the Prophet, things be upon him, asked, will you testify that there is no God but Allah? And the man said, no. But here's what I will do. I will not fight against you, nor will I join those who do. The Prophet let the man go free. The would-be assassin returned to his people and boasted, I have returned from one of the best of mankind. This was not rocket science. This was merely the peace upon him, putting two instructive verses of Allah into practice. And what were those verses? The first one, verse chapter 2, verse 226. Let there be no compulsion in religion. Truth has been made clear from error. Whoever rejects false worship and believes in Allah has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that never breaks. And Allah knows and hears all things. And the next verse, chapter 60, verse 8. Allah does not forbid you to be just and righteous towards those who do not go into battle against you over matters of faith and did not expel you from your homes. Deal with them justly. Allah loves those who are just. I mentioned previously that the brutality of 9-11 is in absolute conflict with the noble principle of Islam. Let me explain. The emperor of the Byzantine Empire launched the mother of all armies, a fighting force of 200,000 prophets, fledgling community. A fighting force of 200,000. The prophet scratched up a contingent of 3,000 men to at Muta. Addressed to the departing soldiers who were outnumbered 66 to 1, the Prophet, peace be upon the following rules of engagement. Keep it down if you can just bring this out and put it over here. The receptor. It's the receptor. So in his final address to the departing soldiers, he outlined the following discipline of engagement. He said, fight the enemy in the name of Allah. Don't plunder or conceal booty. Don't kill children. Don't kill women. Don't kill all men. Don't kill religious leaders. Don't cut down trees. Don't demolish homes. The indiscriminate murder committed by but the perpetrators of 9-11 bears no resemblance to the purity of engagement and restraint emphasized in the Prophet's address. We should not do these murderers any favors. We should not legitimize their actions by associating them with the pristine standards set by the Prophet ﷺ. Peace and blessings be upon him. We should not afford them the positive airtime by associating them with the noble principles of Islam. Ten years on, how has 9-11 changed us? What are American Muslims doing differently? How are we adapting to a new reality? 9-11 woke us up from a deep slumber. It brought home several truths. Islam was absent, off the beaten track, unknown, private, inaccessible, lacking a social face. 
numerous very positive steps have been taken to address these shortcomings. The social engagement of fleet-footed organizations like Why Islam testify to this. Here are some of the services and programs hosted by Why Islam. Soup kitchens and food banks. Schooling assistance, example back to school supplies. Regular interfaith dialogue. Community counseling programs with a national toll-free hotline. Where do we go from here? How do we set our coordinates? As we survey the horizon of an ever-shrinking world, we see the looming challenges of distrust, disunity, deprivation, greed, the absence of self-scrutiny. Here are several broad principles that should help us fashion and nurture our goals. Mohandas Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see in your world. Martin Luther King Jr. said, the means we use must be as pure as the ends we seek. Buddha said, three things cannot be long hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. The prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Desire for your brother what you desire for yourself. The Quran, chapter 41, verse 34 speaks, Good and evil cannot be equal. Repel evil with that which is better. Then indeed, the existing en 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 then existing enmity will be transformed into passionate friendship. The Quran speaks, chapter 6, verse 106, 108, sorry. Revile not ye those whom they call upon besides Allah, lest out of spite they revile Allah in their ignorance. Yes, there is absolutely no room for complacency. The best is yet to come. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you.